Sources in the Carter administration are saying his tax plan will offer a $15 billion cut for individuals and nearly $7 billion for business. The New York Times reports that secret FBI files show Cuba had helped the radical weathermen in the past. More from Moses Schoenfeld at the U.N. Agents in the U.N. Cuban delegation were the conduit for contact with U.S. anti-war groups in 1969 and 70. A secret FBI report aimed to establish that weathermen underground members were operating as secret agents of a foreign power and were a legitimate target of counterintelligence methods. Obtained by the New York Times, the report was made last year after the Justice Department began investigating alleged FBI legal acts against weathermen Moses Shams by the United Nations. Soviet newspaper Pravda claims reactionary circles in the U.S. are preventing the Carter administration from further efforts in detente. Two Soviet cosmonauts are in orbit expected to link up with a new space station, marking the 20th anniversary of the first Sputnik space shot and the 60th of the Bolshevik Revolution. This is Comprehensive News from Mutual Radio. I'm Duff Thomas. Now that you have served your nation, we extend this invitation. Can we serve you at your VA? Do you need help from the VA, but it's too far to drive? Why not try VA's toll-free telephone service? In most areas of the country, you can call the Veterans Administration long distance, and it won't cost you a cent. When you call, you'll talk to a specially trained Veterans Benefits Counselor who can answer all your questions. So don't drive long distance, call long distance. Check your local phone book for the toll-free number of your nearest VA office. Long Island Newspaper Newsday reports that more than a million dollars had been deposited in the Georgia bank Bert Lance headed before he took the job as budget director. That was that it was federal money. More on the story from Randall Hinton in Atlanta. Former OMB director Bert Lance is not saying a word just yet about published reports involving the National Bank of Georgia. The reports say that MBG, based here in Atlanta, was the recipient of just over $1.3 million in federal savings deposits since the first of the year. Such large deposits are said to be unusual. Lance still owns about 200,000 shares of MBG stock. Randall Hinton, Atlanta. The Longshoreman strike continues. An update report from Lynn King in New Orleans. Longshoremen in New Orleans are waiting to see whether dock workers and other ports follow their lead in calling a general waterfront strike. The leadership of the International Longshoremen's Association called for a strike of only those ships which use labor-saving containerized cargo, the main issue in the national strike. Workers heeded that call in all Gulf and Atlantic ports except here in New Orleans. Len King, New Orleans. Demonstration in New York against the Concord landing at Kennedy Airport didn't turn out to be much, but here's Don Ross. Carol Berman, chairperson of the Emergency Coalition to Stop the SST, says the operators of Kennedy Airport must enact the noise regulation to ban the supersonic jet. I have to realize that this is an airport that has to be run for the one million people who live around it. It cannot be disregarded totally as we have been in the past. The Supreme Court will meet in private session next Friday to determine whether to extend a temporary delay on Concord flight. Don Roth, New York. You're listening to Mutual News. More on that story, the Soviet Union sending two cosmonauts into orbit. We got this additional information from Charles Bremner reporting from Moscow. The Soviet Union ended the third decade of its space program with the launching of two cosmonauts into Earth orbit to join a new space station. The spacecraft, Soyuz 25, blasted off from the Central Asian plains in the early hours of the morning, and it's expected to take the men to a rendezvous with the station, Salyut 6, within the next two days. Soviet officials weren't secretive about the mission. They were quick to show everyone films of the successful launch. More from Charles Bremner. Soviet TV showed a film of the launching some six hours after the dawn blast off from Central Asia. The two cosmonauts, who were both in their mid-30s and on their first space mission, were shown climbing out of a bus and into their capsule. And Colonel Kavalyona told TV viewers he was feeling fine. He then waved a clenched fist salute from the steps of the elevator. Charles Bremner, reporting from Moscow. And this is Duff Thomas, Mutual News in Washington. For news and commentary for sports and special events, this is the Mutual Broadcasting System, the leader in network radio.
Newsweek magazine reports the Palestine Liberation Organization has told the White House the PLO is ready to accept UN Resolution 242 as a basis for Mideast peace talks. That resolution guarantees Israel's right to exist. Pennsylvania Republican Senator Richard Schweiker charges President Carter brought the Soviets into Mideast negotiations in order to get nuclear arms control talks off dead center. I think it's quite an uh, interesting coincidence that within a matter of week there's since the big new breakthroughs and our soft two talks that have been deadlocked and we issue a joint statement of the Middle East uh, completely reversing our past policy and feel and bring them in with a glad hand. And uh, there's no advantage to us in doing that unless we uh, trade it off for something else. And lo and behold, that's what happened this week. Two Russian cosmonauts launched into orbit this morning are planning to link up with a space station, and reports from Moscow indicate they may be going after America's 84-day space endurance record. This is comprehensive news from Mutual Radio. I'm Don Hoover. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, Sal. Sal Manoa. Us chimes is tying this gal's tummy into a veritable amusement park. Yes, honey. Amusing for us, abusing for her. Take that chubby food poison. That tummy's worst enemy. Us chimes is ready to oblige, however. Good thing for us that this gal didn't keep her utensils and meat preparation dishes clean. Yeah, yeah, she was observed putting the cooked meat back on the same platter it was on when it was raw. And she didn't clean the platter in between. Uh, what us pro tummy twisters call cross-contamination. Uh, yeah, yeah, us germs is also glad she didn't write for that free booklet. Free booklet? Yeah, the one folks get by writing to Food Safety, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington, D.C., 20250. Hold it down, Sal. Huh? Somebody might hear you. Well, how come? Well, fella Jimes, after all, this tummy is bugged. Maine Democratic Senator Edmund Muskie says the Carter administration hasn't done enough to guard against a repeat of last winter's natural gas shortages. The administration has prepared a program which they call WEEP with many useful suggestions in it. Many of them have not been implemented. Many of them may not be implemented. And our preparation for the winter, if we get to the kinds of problems that we anticipate, will be less than adequate. Muskie calls the energy outlook for the coming winter grim. He makes several suggestions, including the purchase of more natural gas from Canada. In an interview published in Paris, Panamanian leader Omar Torrio says the new canal treaty does not clearly define America's right to intervene militarily to protect the waterway. Ranking Senate Foreign Relations Committee Democrat Frank Church says he wants that question cleared up. Church told broadcast interviewers today he thinks the entire committee should go to Panama to find the answer. White House correspondent Bob Moore reports President Carter is nearing some decisions on a tax cut. The president will continue to go over more options on tax reform with his key advisors this week so that the package will be ready to present to Congress before adjournment. Latest indications are that the president intends to propose overall reductions by as much as $22 billion. Bob Moore, the White House. The Atlanta Constitution's Monday morning editions quote federal officials as saying reports that Bert Lance's Atlanta Bank got an unusually large amount of federal deposits this year may be misleading. The newspaper quotes Lance as denying any role in getting that federal money. The nation's 12 Republican governors are meeting at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. Their numbers have been steadily shrinking since 1970, and a major topic of the conference will be strategy for reversing that trend beginning with next year's elections. You're listening to Mutual News. Attorney General Griffin Bell says the Justice Department is preparing an opinion on whether Congress can constitutionally extend the deadline for states to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. As it stands now, the amendment will die unless three more states approve it before March of 1979. From New York, Don Ross reports opponents of landing rights for the Concord have staged another protest at Kennedy International Airport. While well, the number of anti-SST demonstrators was smaller than previous turnouts, much of it attributed to the rain, Carol Berman of the Emergency Coalition to Stop the SST says the demonstration was a success. The point was made that we are not accepting the Port Authority's idea for a test of Concord at Kennedy. That they know for sure. Carol Berman says SST opponents will never stop fighting and will never accept the Concord. Don Roth, New York. The 1978 Farmer's Almanac predicts a hard winter for the Northeast and a lot of snow and a late spring for the rest of the country. Last year's Almanac forecast of droughts and blizzards was dead right. Don Hoover, Mutual News, Washington. This is Mutual, your network for news and sports. 
immigration sources say President Carter wants a tax cut of $15 billion for individuals, $7 billion for business. Mr. Carter says he intends to promote substantial reductions in the overall tax burden on the American people, but that some of his proposals are likely to be controversial. Latest indications are that overall reductions for the public and business could come to as much as $22 billion. The president will continue to go over the options with key advisors this week. Bob Moore, the White House. Newsweek magazine says the PLO is prepared to accept the right of Israel to exist within secure borders as a framework for Middle East peace talks. Senator Jacob Javits, ever wary. The PLO has demonstrated in the Lebanon what it really is. To wit, an extremely disruptive, not just revolutionary, but really anarchic force. They can't even, uh, can't even cooperate with Syria, uh, one of the confrontation Arab states. And they can't even tame the PLO so it won't wage an act of war today against Christian Lebanese, not against Israelis. Soviet newspaper Pravda claims reactionary circles in the U.S. are blocking further detente by the Carter administration. This is comprehensive news from Mutual Radio. I'm Duff Thomas. For some, it's the great American dream. For others, it's the great American nightmare. The nightmare of being poor in a land that's rich, of being hungry in a land of plenty, of being sick in a land of the healthy. And there are other people who have a dream. A dream of America getting better for everyone, everywhere in America. They're in VISTA, volunteers in service to America. They're people just like you, 18 to 80. They work in urban areas and rural areas. They're low-income people and high-income people. VISTA needs people who will help communities do what needs to be done. But what does all this give to a VISTA volunteer? The reward of knowing you've done something for someone who needed it. Knowing you've learned as much as you've taught knowing you've gotten a rare opportunity to share the American dream with someone who stopped dreaming a long time ago. VISTA is coming alive again. Come alive with us. Call VISTA toll-free, 800-424-8580. A public service of this station and the Advertising Council. Demonstration against the Concorde at Kennedy Airport in New York. Details from Don Ross. The chairperson of the coalition to stop the SST, Carol Berman, says while some air travelers were inconvenienced by the protest, for local residents, Concord landings will be a 24-hour problem. It means the devaluation of our homes, maybe skin cancer, as was predicted in the environmental impact statement. It means ear pain, head pain, chest pain, as the people down in Dulles have complained about. It means property damage and structural vibration. It's not just a momentary inconvenience. While a less than expected number turned out on a rainy Sunday, the protest did slow Kennedy Airport travelers. Don Ross, New York. The dock workers strike in New Orleans. For an update on that, we go to Lynn King. Longshoremen in New Orleans are waiting to see whether dock workers in other ports follow their lead in calling a general waterfront strike. The leadership of the International Longshoremen's Association called for a strike of only those ships which use labor-saving containerized cargo, the main issue in the national strike. Workers heeded that call in all Gulf and Atlantic ports except here in New Orleans. Lynn King, New Orleans. Two Soviet cosmonauts orbiting the Earth. We asked newsman Charles Bremner in Moscow about the timing. It's believed in Moscow that the cosmonauts may stage some space spectacular to mark not only the Sputnik anniversary, but the 60th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution next month. One possibility is that they'll go for the 84-day endurance record set by the Americans in 1974. Charles Bremner in Moscow. You're listening to Mutual News. A new approach to the Senate on the Panama Canal from the President. A report from Mike Sugarman in Los Angeles. The Los Angeles Times reports the Carter administration plans to ask Senate leadership for help in the push for ratification of the Panama Canal Treaty. The paper says strategists plan to ask Senators Byrd, Baker, Case, and others to propose a statement clarifying some crucial points in the pact and then have the President and Panamanian leader Omar Torrijos endorse it. The administration hopes such a move could reduce the amount of opposition facing the treaty in the Senate. Mike Sugarman, Los Angeles. All the experts are saying it's going to be another rough winter. Senator Edmund Muskie is concerned about lack of planning. We're alerting the country, and hopefully uh, we can alert uh, the administration uh, to the necessity uh, for gearing up our efforts. And uh, I, I hope that we can bring the unpleasant memory of last winter to the attention of the president, as well as the administration, and to the Congress, because there will be a need for some additional legislation. This is Duff Thomas, Mutual News in Washington. Your network leader in news and sport. The New York
York Yankees have won the American League pennant, defeating the Kansas City Royals in their final playoff game tonight in Kansas City by a score of 5-3. to three. They still don't believe it in Kansas City. For eight innings, Kansas City humbled the mighty Yanks. And then suddenly, the Yanks, not to be denied, came alive. And when the final out was recorded, 5-3 to three, New York. They now meet the Los Angeles Dodgers in the World Series. There were reports of more irregularities in Burt Lance's bank today. And with that story, his mutuals, Don Ross in New York. The Long Island newspaper Newsday says more than $1 million in U.S. government funds has been placed in new deposits at the financially troubled bank in which Burt Lance holds a major interest. The paper based its report on the records of the U.S. controller of the currency. The large savings deposits at the National Bank of Georgia were reportedly made during the first quarter of this year, the time when Lance was budget director after serving as director of the Atlanta Bank. Bank officials say nothing irregular was happening. This is comprehensive news from Mutual Radio. I'm Ivan Scott. You can win a free vacation for two in New York for eight days and seven nights via American Airlines or 102 other great prizes. It's free, it's easy. Just look for the drugstore displaying the prize banner. Go in and get your free entry blank. And while there, you can pick up this month's specials. MTZ Spray. Do you have the sniffles? Your stuffed up nose may come from hay fever, summer colds, or sinus congestion. MTZ begins in seconds to help you breathe easier and feel better fast. MTZ comes in nose drops and convenient nasal spray. MTZ. Physoderm. You can deep clean and moisturize your face every day by washing with Physoderm. And you'll be giving your skin 5.5 pH protection against dryness and irritation. Physoderm with 5.5 pH protection for your skin. And if you're over 60, you are eligible to join our Senior Citizen Savings Club. Get your application at any drugstore displaying the Senior Citizens Savings Club sign. Paid for by the Pharmacist Public Relations Bureau. In that longshoreman strike from Maine to Texas, New Orleans is setting the pace and the ILA isn't happy about it. For that story, here's reporter Len King in the Crescent City. The port of New Orleans is virtually shut down today, the result of a general strike called by two ILA locals here. Dock workers have voted by voting machine for the strike to continue. Militants among the New Orleans membership say that the recent vote may influence other locals to expand strikes in other ports. Len King, New Orleans. Israeli Foreign Minister Moshe Dayan says Israel would quit any Geneva peace conference which tried to introduce the issues of a Palestinian homeland or formal representation of the Palestine Liberation Organization. But Dayan's Egyptian counterpart, Ishmael Fahmy, says a Geneva conference will not take place if the PLO is excluded. The president of the Association of Marriage and Family Counselors tells his convention in San Francisco that marriages should be sampled first. For that story, here's Knowles Robertson. So you don't want to get married, but you'd like to have a working relationship with somebody. Well, certain segments of our society frown on that. But in San Francisco, the president of the American Association of Marriage and Family Counselors, Frederick Humphrey, says marriages are failing because the partners don't have any experience. And to overcome that, should live together for a while before making the big plunge. Noel's Robertson, San Francisco. President Idi Amin of Uganda observed the 15th anniversary of Ugandan independence today with an appeal to black African nations to form a liberation army to fight against Rhodesia and South Africa. You're listening to Mutual News. Hi, this is Jim Backus and Mr. Magoo to tell you about Lazy Boy, the chair people. Hey, Jim, I want to tell them about the quality. Folks, you can depend on Lazy Boy's built-in quality. What craftsmanship? Hey, Jim, I want to tell them about the beauty. Folks, the outstanding beauty of a Lazy Boy chair will complement any decor. There's a wide variety of styles to select from. Hey, Jim Backus, I want to tell everyone about Lazy Boy's rugged He-Man construction and total comfort. Sorry, Mr. Magoo, our time is up. The great armor hot dog controversy. Is the dog kids love to bite just for kids? Bill Larson, bricklayer. Tom is the dog bricklayers love to bite. Lots of bricklayers eat armor hot dogs. We can eat them with one hand while mixing cement with the other. We love their juicy taste. No cereals, no fillers, just good, delicious meat. Armor hot dogs, the dog bricklayers love to bite. Reach for quality, reach for the stars, armor. Ivan Scott, Mutual News, Washington. Your network leader in news and sports. 